بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلي وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد تفسير سعد بن عبد الرحمن بن ناصر سعد رحمه الله سوره المجدله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قد سمي الله قول التي تجادلك في زوجها وتشتكي الى الله والله يسمع تحاوركما ان الله سميع بصير Allah is indeed the heart the words of the woman who pleads with you concerning her husband and complains to Allah. Allah hears the discussion between the two of you, for Allah is all hearing, all seeing. Alladheena yudahiruna minkum min nisaihim ma hunna ummatuhum walad in innum atum ila Allah waladnahum wa innahum layaquna min karamin ala qawli wa zura wa inna Allah laafuun ghafur. As for those who uh, as for those among you who divorce their wives by likening them to their mothers they are not their mothers none can be their mothers except those who give birth them verily they utter words that are abhorrent and false but Allah is indeed of forgiving most merciful ay naam wal ladina yudahiruna min nisaihim thumma yaudu liman qalu fatahru raqbatan min qabli tamasa dhalikum tuwaduna bihi wallahu bima ta'malun khabir ay naam But as for those who divorce their wives by likening them to their mothers and, and then, then decide to, 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 to retract what they have said, they must free a slave before the couple to touch one another, thus you are commanded to do, and Allah is well aware of that you do. فَمَنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ فَصِيَامُ شَهْرَيْنِ مُتَتَابِعَيْنِ مِنْ كَمْلِ يَتَمَاسَّى فَمَنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ فَصِيَامُ سِتِينَ مِسْكِينَ ذَلِكَ لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ وَلِلْكَافِرِينَ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Anyone who lacks the means to free a slave must fast for two consecutive months before the couple touch one another, but whoever is unable to do that must feed 60, 60 needy persons. That is so that you may truly believe in Allah and His Messenger. Such are the limits ordained by Allah, and for the disbelievers there will be a painful punishment. This, you know, these verses were revealed concerning a man of the Ansar, who, who, whose wife complained to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will be finally exalted you see and took her case to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sallallahu alaihi wasallam blessings blessings and peace be upon him when he prophesied intimacy with her to, to himself after a lengthy marriage and having children and he was very old man she complained to Allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam about what had happened between them and uh, and did not uh, and, 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 and and did so repeatedly and, and persistently Allah has indeed heard the words of the woman who pleads with you concerning her husband and complains to Allah Allah has the discussion between the two of you that is what you what you say to one another for Allah is all hearing and he has all voices at all times expressing all kinds of need, of, of of needs all seeing he can be he can see the footstep of a black ant walking on a solid rock on the dark night this tells us of the perfect nature of his hearing and seeing and that they encompass all things small and great That also indicates that Allah will respond to her complaint and remove her distress. Hence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the ruling on her case and that of others in general terms. As he says, as for those among you who divorce their wives by likening them to their mothers, they are not their mothers. None can be their mothers except those who give birth them. This refers to a form of divorce called dihar that was, that was, that was practiced during the, during the jah, 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 jahiliyyah. In which a man will, will say to his wife, you are to me as the back of my mother. Or some other mah maharam relative or intimacy which you which which which, which, which with, with you intimacy or with intimacy or intimacy with you is prohibited for me. The the custom was actually referred to the to the black the to black the hair. Hence Allah called this practice the hair and say and said, as for those among you who divorce their wives by likening them to their mothers, they are not their mothers. What is meant is how can they say such words? Which are not, which are known to have no peace in reality, and liking their wives to their mothers who who, who bore them. Allah regarded this matter as something extremely uh, serious and abhorrent. Hence, He said, "Very the utter words that are uh, abhorrent, that is that is repulsive and false, that is lies." But Allah is indeed of forgiving, most merciful to the one who commits some uh, some in, in infractions, but follows them with sincere repentance. As for those who divorce their wives by likening them to their mothers, then decide to re to, re to to retract what they what they have said. What is meant is that such a person wants to have intercourse with his wife, whom he divorced by likening her to his mother, and that as soon as he decides that, that he wants to do uh, so, he must offer the uh, expression mentioned. This is indicated by the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says concerning the expression, it must be offered before they touch one another. 
and I teased as, as soon as the decision is made. Once, he, uh, once the husband decides to retract what he said, the expiration of a forbidding intimacy with his wife for himself is, is to free a slave. That is a believing slave that is defined or in a different verse. The slave, the slave may be a female, male or female, but it is, it is stipulated that he, is, he, he or she must be free of any defect that could affect his or her ability to work. Before the couple touch one another, that is how the husband must refrain from having intercourse with the wife whom he divorced by liking her to his mother until he has offered expression by freeing a slave. Thus, you are called munish to do. That is the ruling has been explained to you, accompanied by the warning because what is meant by admonishing is, is explaining the ruling along with, this, with, with, with the encouragement and warning. If the one who wants to divorce his wife by likening her to his mother is told that he must free a slave in expression, he will refrain from doing that. And Allah is well aware of that. Uh, 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 is, is, and Allah is well aware of all that you do, and He will request each person for his, for his deeds. Anyone who lacks the means to free a slave, that is, he does not own a slave whom he can free, and he cannot find a slave or find the money with which to buy one. Then he must fast two, must fast two consecutive months before the couple touch one another. But whoever is unable to do that, namely fasting, must feed 60 needy persons, either by giving them enough of the local step of food to suffice them, as is the view of many commentators, or by feeding each poor person a mad or wheat or, wheat or half, a, half a sa of another food that is acceptable, as the cattle feed, as is the view of others. The ruling that we have explained and clarified to you is, so that you may truly believe in Allah and His Messenger, by adhering to these and other rulings, and acting in accordance with them, adherence to the rulings of Allah and acting in accordance with them, is part of faith. And it is the aim of faith and is one of the things that cause faith to increase, develop and become complete. Such are the limits ordained by Allah, that one should not transgress, and for the believers there will be a painful punishment. This passage contains a number of rulings including the following, Aynam. The kindness of Allah to his slaves and his care for them, as he mentions the complaint of this woman who was distressed, and he relieved, and relieved her of, her, of, of that stress. In fact, he relieved her, he relieved, he relieved, he relieved her distress with a ruling that was general in the application. For anyone who is faced with a similar issue, the, the, the har has to do specifically with forbidding to one's intimacy with one's wife, because Allah says, As for those among you who divorce their wives, if a man forbids himself intimacy with his wife, with his slave woman, that is not the har. Right comes under the heeding of forbidding food and drinking to oneself, for which only the expression for breaking an oath, uh, kafar to Yemen, is, uh, Yemen is, is, is required. It's not a value to divorce a woman by the har before marrying her, because she is not one of a man's wife at, at the time of the har, just as it's not a permissible to divorce her by talak. The hair is prohibited because Allah describes it uh, as, as words that are uh, abhorrent and false. Allah highlights the wisdom behind the ruling as he says they are not their mothers. It is, like, it is disliked for a man to call his wife by the, me, the, by the names of his mahram, such as saying, my, oh, oh my mother, or oh my sister, and they like because this matter, this makes like, like her, this makes her like a ma mahram. Expiration only becomes my, my obligatory and once the decision is to retract its words is made, not when the words of the heart itself are uttered. With regard to freeing a slave in expression, it is acceptable to free one who is young or old, male or female, because of the general meaning of the verse which speaks of that. The expression, whether it's by freeing the slave or, free or fasting, must be offered before the couple touch one another. As Allah has specified, this is in, this is in contrast to, uh, to expression. By feeding poor person in which a case, it is permissible for the, for, the, for the couple to resume intimacy in the period when the food is being disturbed. Perhaps the wisdom behind requiring explanation before the couple touch one another is to put more pressure on the individual to offer that expectation because if he if he is longing to have intercourse with his wife but he knows that he cannot do that until after expression has been offered he will ask them to offer expression to, it is essential to feed 60 poor person if he collects food for 60 poor person then he gives to give to one or more individuals but less than 60 that is as, that, that is not acceptable because allah says must feed 60 need uh, need 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 uh, needy persons إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُهَادُونَ لَهَا وَرَسُولَ كُبِتُهُ كَمَا كُبِتَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ وَتَنْزَلْنَا آيَاتٍ بَيْنَةُ لِلْكَافِنَ عَذَابٌ مُهِينٌ Very those who oppose Allah and His Messenger will be abased, as those who came before them were abased. For we have been sent down clear signs, and for the deluce there will be a humiliating punishment. يَوْمَ يَعْبَاتُمُ اللَّهُ جَمِيعًا فَيُنَبِيُهُمْ يَعْمِلُوا وَعَصَاهُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُوهُ وَاللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ شَهِي
on the day when Allah will, will, will resurrect them and all and, and uh, restore them all and will all, all and will inform them about what they used to do. Allah has kept account of it whilst they have forgotten it. And Allah is witness of all things. Opposing Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam means going against them and disobeying them, especially with regard to serious matters, such as opposing Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by disbelieving and showing enemies towards the close friend of Allah, will be a base as those who come before them who are base. That is, they will be humiliated and disgraced as so done to those who come before them as a request and live and fitting punishment. They have no excuse before Allah, for Allah has established the ultimate proof against humanity. He sent down clear revelations and proofs to explain the fact of faith and explain the ultimate aims and goals. So whoever follows them and acts in accordance with them is one of those who are guided and will triumph. As for the disbelievers, who disbelieve in them, there will be a humiliating punishment. That is to illuminate them and debase them, and as they as they were too arrogant to follow the, the revelations of Allah, who He will illuminate them and bring them low. On the day when Allah will resurrect them all, and they arise from the, their, gra their graves quickly, He will requite them for their deeds, and will inform them about what they used to do, both good and evil, because He knows that and has written, in, in, has, has written it in, in a law he mafud, and He commanded the noble angelic scribes to record it. Moreover, the doers of those deeds have forgotten what they did, but Allah has kept a record of it, and Allah is witness of all things, both visible deeds and what is hidden, and people sat, and all hidden matters. Hence He speaks of His vastness, of His knowledge, and that it encompasses all that is, is in the heavens and on, on, on earth, both small and great. Ainam. Alam taranna Allah ayalam ma fi samawat wa ma fi al-ard ma yakun min najwa tarat illa huwa rabi wa lakhus illa huwa sabdisum wa al-adna min dar al-akhir illa huwa mahu ina ma kanu thumma ina biya milu yomil kiyama inna Allah bikulli shayin alim Do you not see that Allah knows all that is in the heavens and all that is on earth? There is no private composition among three but he is their fourth or among five but he is their sixth or among few or more than that but he is with them wherever they may be then he will inform them of their deeds on the day of resurrection very last knowledge of all things there is no private composition among three but he is their fourth or among five but he is their sixth or among few or fewer or more than that but he is with them wherever they may be what is me what is meant by this by by this, by this being with being with being with being, with, being with is that he is with, with them by means of his knowledge <coughs> Which encompasses, in, um, <coughs> which encompasses all that they talk about in private and keep and keep to themselves. Hence, he says, "Barely Allah has knowledge of all things." Then he says, "Alam tara ila aladin anuhu an najwa tu ma yaudu liman limanuhu anhu wa tanajoon bilit maludwan wa masid rasul wa ida jau ka hayyo ka ma lamu kallahu bima bima lam yuhi ka bihillah wa yakuna fi anfusim." Have you not seen those who are forbidden to converse maliciously, uh, maliciously in private that they go back to what they were forbidden to do and converse privately in sin and transgression and in disobedience to the messenger and when they come to you they, they, they greet you in, in a manner other than that in which Allah greets you and they say to another why does Allah not punish us for what, they, for what we say sufficient for them is hell which, which they will enter a, a humpless journey's end I know يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا نجيت من رسول إذا نجيت فلا 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 تناجوا بالإثم بالإثم الوديان وما سيد الرسول وتناجوا بالبر والتقوى وتقوا الله الذي له تشرون Or you who believe when you converse in private, do not do not uh, do not do so in sin and transgression, and in disobedience to the messenger. Rather, do so in righteousness and pity, and fear Allah unto whom you will be gathered. Private conversation, private conversation is a conversation between two or more people. It may be a discussion about something good or something evil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs the believers to converse in righteousness, which includes all kinds of goodness, obedience, fulfilling duties towards Allah and Islam, and righteousness and pity, which here refers to refraining from all kinds of obedience and sinful actions. The believer complies with this divine command so you will not find him conversing or, or talking about anything but that which brings him closer to Allah and keeps him away from that which incurs his wrath. The evildoers take the command of Allah lightly and converse in his own transgression and in enmity and disobedience towards the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as they have created all the time with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and when they come to you they greet you in a manner other, other, other than that in which Allah greets you. That is, they have poor etiquette with you when they meet, greet you, and they say to one another, 
That is the respect to one another, saying that 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 they know of the unseen and the seen tells us about which is the which is what the which is that which is that they said. Verily, verily, why does Allah not punish us for what we say? What the, what this means is that they took their matter lightly and thought because the question was not asked for them that there was nothing wrong with what they said. By what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, explaining that He gives the respect but does not forget sufficient for them is hell which they will enter. That is hell will suffice them in which all righteousness and punishment will be combined and will be will encompass them and they will be subjected to the torment therein. A, a hapless journey's end. The people mentioned here are either some of the hypocrites who are truly pretending to be believers and are the messengers of Allah Allah in this manner, which might give the impression that they intended good, good towards uh, intended good towards him. But they were lying, or they are some of the people of the book who will greet the Prophet by saying as salam as al as as sam alayka ya Muhammad, meaning may death be upon you. إنما نجوا من الشيطان لذن الذين آمنوا وليس بدارهم شيء إلا بدنا ولا الله لا يفعل توكل المؤمنون ملشس ملشس بريفت كونفسون is only prompted by the شيطان so that he may cause grief to the believers but he cannot harm them in the list except by Allah's leave and Allah let the believers put their trust ملشس بريفت كونفسون that is بريفت كونفسون in which the enemies of the believers plotted against them and planned to do to do to do them harm it is only prompted by prompted by the شيطان whose strategy Jam is weak and whose plot do not lead to any result, so that he may cause grief to the believers. This is all. The, this is all that they can achieve by means of this plot. But he cannot harm them in the least, except by Allah's leave. For Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has promised to suffice the believers and support them against the enemies, as He says elsewhere. But the plotting of evil affects affect none but its but its others. No matter how much the enemies of Allah is missing, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala believe as manifestly, converse and plot, they only harm themselves, and they cannot harm the believers except only as much as Allah wills and decrees. And in Allah, let the believers put their trust. That is, let them rely on Him and have confidence in His promise. For whoever puts his trust in Allah, Allah will suffice him against the plot of his enemies. And will take care of his religious and worldly affairs. Ya ayu al-ladina amanu. Ida aki lakum wa tafasu fi al-majalis. Tafasu yafsi Allahu lakum. Wa ida aki la inshudu fa inshudu yarfa Allahu al-ladina amanu minkum. Wa lanu tunajatu Allahu bima tamanu khabir. Aynam. O you who believe when you are told to make room in your gatherings, then make room. Allah will grant you abundance. And when you are told to rise, then rise. Allah will raise instead of those of you who are who believe, and especially those who have been given knowledge. Allah is well aware of all that you do. Ya Allah, Ya Allah is teaching manners to his believing slaves. When they came together in a community to gathering, and there is a need to make room for one another or for newcomers in the gathering, it is good manners to make room for them, and that will not harm anyone who is already sitting in the outside. Side slightest, for his brother will be able to have room without causing any harm to the one who is already there. The reward is of the same nature as 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 they did. So whoever makes room for others, Allah will grant him abundance. And when you are told to rise, that is to give up your space in a gathering for some some for some reason, then rest that it is had that it has them to get up to stuff that purpose. Doing these things is part of knowledge and faith. For Allah will raise the people of knowledge and faith in this according to what He has bestowed upon them of knowledge and faith. And Allah is 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 well aware of all that you do, and He will require each person for his deeds. If they are good, then the outcome will be good, and if they are bad, then the outcome will be bad. This verse refers to the virtue of knowledge and tells us that the virtue and outcome thereof is to observe proper etiquette and act in accordance with, with that knowledge. Aina. Ya ayuha alladina amanu idha najaytum al-rasoola faqaddimu bayna dayna juwakum sadaqat darahillakum adaru fa illam tajidu fa inna Allah hafur rahim O you who believe when you wish to converse privately with the messenger, give something in charity beforehand that is better for you and more conducive to purify but you do not have the means then verily Allah is soft forgiving most most merciful أشركتم أن تقدموا بين دين جواكم صدقات فإذا لم تفعلوا تعب الله عليكم فأقيم الصلاة وتزكاة وأتي الله ورسوله والله خبير بما تعملون. So do you find yourself reluctant to give something in charity before conversing privately with him as you have done so and Allah has pardoned you? Then instead you pray and give zakat and obey Allah and His messenger and Allah is and Allah is is well aware of all that you do. Ya Allah instruct the believers to give charity before conversing privately with Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. However, dispelling them and teaching them how to venerate and show respect to the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam for this generation is better for the believers and more conducive to purify. 
In other words, this will enable you to, to, to observe good manners and increase you in word and you will prefer from bad manners, such as, not show, such, as not show, such, such, such as not showing respect to the messenger of Allah and failing to observe proper etiquette by conversing too much with him for no good reason. If a person is instructed to give charity before conversing with him, this will distinguish between those who are keen to benefit and learn, so they will, so they will not mind giving charity. And those who are not keen to learn and, 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 have, and have no desire for good, rather their only aim is to mere, to mere chit chat, so they will stop disturbing the message sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This ruling is applicable to the one who cannot who can afford to give charity. As for the one who cannot afford to give to give it, Allah did not make things difficult for him. Rather, He pardoned him and let him off, and made it permissible for him to converse privately with the Messenger of Allah without giving charity that he is not able to give. When Allah Subhanahu wa Taala saw, so that the believers who are reluctant and found in it about bad burden some to give charity every time they wanted to converse privately with the Messenger of Allah made it easier for them and did not hold them to, to account. The obligation to give charity before conversing with him was, was waived, but the obligation of venerating the Messenger of Allah and respecting his status remained in effect and was not abrogated. Because the requirement of giving charity was introduced for a purpose and was not the aim in, in, in uh, and there was, uh, was not an aim in it and of itself. Rather the purpose behind it behind it, it was to observe proper etiquette with the Messenger of Allah and show respect to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed them to adhere to the main commands that are intended for their own sake and not for, for, for another person. As he said, as you have not, uh, have not uh, as you have not done so, that is because it was not easy for you to, to give charity. Allah has pardoned you, that is, He has forgiven you for that. Uh, for that, then establish prayer with all of its essential parts, fulfilling all its conditions and doing it properly, and give zakah, which is an obligation upon your wealth, those who are entitled to it. Those, two, those, these two acts of worship are the most important physical and financial act of worship. Whoever does them in the manner prescribed has fulfilled his duty for Allah and toward his slave. Hence Allah says after that, and obey Allah and his messenger. This is the most comprehensive of commands. The, the, that includes obeying Allah and obeying his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are complying with the commands heading to your prohibition, believing what they had told us, and adhering to the limit by said by Allah. What matters in all of that is sincerity and doing them properly. Hence Allah says, and Allah is, well aware, Allah is well aware of all that you do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows their deeds, how they were done and the intention behind them. So he will request them according to his knowledge of what was in their hearts. Alam tara alladhina tawallahu qawman qadib allahu alayhim mahu min kuala mihun lifan laka dibahum ya alamun Do you not see those who take us alis people who have inkar the rad of Allah? They are neither of you nor of them and they know ingli swear to Allah Adda allahu lahum adaman shadida inna hum sama kanu ya amalun Allah has prepared for them a severe punishment, even indeed is what they have been doing. اتقدوا ايمانهم جنة فصدوا عن سبيل الله فلهم عذاب مهين. They have taken their oath as a cover for their hypocrisy, not to bear people from the from the from the path of Allah. This will be a humiliating punishment. أي نعم. لن تغني عنهم مالهم ولا وضعهم من الله شيئا. والهيك أصاب النار فيها خالدون. أي نعم. Neither with their wealth nor their children will avail them at all against Allah. They will be inhabitants of the fire, they will abide there forever. Yawma yabayatumu Allahu jameen fa yahlifuna lahu kama yahlifuna lakum wa yahsamannahum ala shalahinahum al kadibun. Ay naam. On the day when Allah resurrects them all, they will swear to Him as they swear to you, thinking that their oaths will benefit them indeed. Indeed it is they who are the liars. استحوذ عليهم الشيطان فأنصهم ذكر الله ولا يكذب الشيطان على إن حزب الشيطان هم الخاسرون الشيطان has gained control over them and has that caused them to forget the remembrance of Allah they are the party of the shaitan indeed it is the party of the shaitan who will be the losers here Allah tells us about the apparent situation of the hypocrite who take us all as the disbelievers among the Jews, Christians and others with whom Allah is angry and who have incurred a big share of divine wrath. And he tells us that those, uh, tell us those, uh, those, uh, those upgrades belong neither to the believers nor to the, the disbelievers, warning where wavering in between, belonging to neither to this, to this nor this. Ainam. They are not believers, either outwardly or inwardly, because inwardly they are with the disbelievers, and they are not with the disbelievers, either, either outwardly or inwardly, because outwardly they are with the believers. This is the description that Allah gives or gives of them. In, in fact, they swear to the opposite of that, which is, which, which is a lie. 
They swear that they are believers, or else they know that they are not believers. They are acquitted for, the, for these treacherous evil doers, unless that Allah has prepared a severe punishment for them. There isn't a severity of which no one can, no one can know. Even even indeed is what they, they have they have been doing. For they did not for they did what that which incurred the wrath of Allah and brought the punishment and, ca and curses upon them. They have taken their oaths as a, as a covert, that is, as a shield with which is, is with which to protect themselves from the blame and rebuke of Allah. Is and his messengers and the believers, because of that they have themselves turned away and turned others uh, and others away from the path of Allah, which is the path that will lead the ones who follow it to them to the guidance of belief. But whoever turns away from it will have nothing but a path that leads to leads to hell. They also will be humiliating punishment because they were too arrogant to believe in Allah and submit to His revelation. They will be humiliated with an eternal punishment that will not be alleviated for even a short while and they will not be, gi be given respect. Neither, neither their world nor their, nor their children will avail them at all against Allah, so they will not ward off the punishment from them in the, in the, in the slightest or bring them any share of reward. They will be humiliated of the fire, will remain in it and never emerge from it, and they will abide there forever. Whoever lives his life ad adhering to something will die in that state. Just as the helper tried to deceive the believers in this world, swearing to them that they were believers on the day of resurrection when Allah raises them, they will swear to Allah as they swore to the believers, thinking that their oath will benefit them, because they deserve hypocrisy and false beliefs kept sinking deeper and deeper into their minds until they was until they were Ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasul. Until they were truly deceived by them and drew and thought that they were following some some something of the world well, that will bring them reward, but they were lying. And it was and, to, and it is well known that the know of the unseen uh, uh, um, and the sin and the and the sin will not be received by 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 lies. Um. What happened to them was the result of shaitan gaining control over them, making their deeds self fair seeming to them and causing them to forget the remembrance of Allah. For is there, for is there uh, a void enemy who intends nothing but evil towards them? He only calls his followers so that they, they, they may become inhabitant of the raging fire. They are the part of the shaitan. Indeed, it is the part of the shaitan who will be the losers, for they will, be, they will lose their religious commitment, their worldly interests, their own souls, and their, and, and their families. Ayna. إن الذين يهادون الله ورسوله أولئك في الذلين كتب الله الأعلون على رسوله إن الله قوي نزيز ولي دوس وبوس الله الله نس مسجا ولي أمون دم مستمليتد الله سريكير الله سريكير أي عند ماي مسجاس ولي شوالي بريفيل فيرلي الله سترونج أن ميتي this is the promise and warning it is a warning دوس وبوس الله نس مسجا صلى الله عليه وسلم by disbelieving and disobeying that they will be defeated and humiliated and their fate will not be good and it is a promise to those who believe in him and in his messenger and follow the messenger the messengers were brought but not just brought and 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 were thus among the party of allah who will be successful victorian success will be of will be theirs and they will prevail in this world and the hereafter it's a promise that will not be broken or changed for it comes from 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 the one who is truthful strong and almighty and nothing and and, and nothing he will is is beyond is beyond is beyond, uh, is beyond him. لا تجدوا قوما يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر ودون من هذا الله ورسوله لو كان وأباهم وأبنائهم وإخوانهم وشرتهم ولا كتب في كل إيمان وجدهم بروه منه ويدخلهم من جنفس ثلاث نهار خالدين فيها رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه لا يكذب الله الله إن يكذب الله والمفلحون you not find any people who believe in Allah in the last day by having close ties with those who oppose Allah and His Messenger, even if their fathers, uh, even if, even if uh, they be their fathers, their sons, their brothers, or their kindred, it is they in whom such is Allah's uh, inscribed faith and surrounded them with the divine aid. He will admit them to guidance through which rivers flow, to obey their name forever Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Him. They are the party of Allah. Well, it is, the, it, is, it is the party of Allah who will be the successful ones. You will not find any people who believe in Allah on the last day, having close ties with those who oppose Allah and His Messenger. That is, faith and close ties with the, with the disbelievers cannot the coexist. A person cannot be truly be a believer in Allah and, and, and the last day unless he acts in accordance with what faith dictates and requires, of loving and taking as all as those who have faith, and the same thing and opposing those who do not have faith, even if they are the closest of people to him, this true faith that leads to the proper outcome and achieves its purpose. The people are the ones in whose acts uh, Allah has inscribed faith. 
In other words, he has instead needs in such a way that he will not be sh shaken or affected by specious argument and doubts. They are the ones whom Allah has strengthened uh, with divine aid, namely his revelation, help, reinforcement, and kindness. They are the ones who will have a good life in this world and will have gardens of bliss in the year after, in which there is everything that their souls may desire and that they may read their eyes, and they will have the best and greatest bliss of all, which is, which, 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 which is that Allah will bestow his pleasure upon them and will never be angry with them. They will be pleased, they will be pleased with their Lord and with what he gives them of, uh, of all kinds of honor, abundant reward and gifts, and highest in such a way that they will not think that anyone has been given anything better than what he has given them. As for those who claim to believe in Allah in the last day, yet it is said that they have a close ties to the enemies of Allah, and they love those who have abandoned faith and turned their backs on it, so their so-called faith is not real. Every matter should have, uh, should have proof and evidence. More claims are of no value, and the one who makes them cannot be sincere. This is the end of the commentary of Surah Al-Mujadila. All praise and thanks are for Allah, uh, and, the, um, um, and, may the, and may the praise and peace of Allah be upon Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his family and his companions, until the day.